So here we have the prototype for the 3 pi Wi-Fi controlled robot and it will be controlled by an iPod Touch or an iPhone. So we can see right here we have the Wi-Fi GSX chip from Roving Networks. Um, that chip is used and or it's powered off of a 9 volt battery as you can see with a simple uh, single pole single throw switch and basically what's happening is the Wi-Fi is creating an ad hoc network <coughs> um, so right now because I haven't actually become an Apple developer um, my MacBook is connected to the Wi-Fi's ad hoc network and I'm running my iPod or iPhone app in the iPhone simulator um, through Xcode <coughs> so here's my simple interface um, it's kinda blurry but you can see on the left is the simple button approach to sending commands. Um, so basically what's happening <coughs> is uh, I'm connected to the, the, the Wi-Fi over the ad hoc network it's creating and when I send um, commands through this iPhone simulator it's, they're actually going through a socket to the Wi-Fi and then the Wi-Fi <coughs> in turn just automatically relays that information over the UART uh, serial interface. So you can see these four cables coming off of the Wi-Fi and those are the RX, TX, uh, ground and uh, V or VCC which on the Wi-Fi is 3.3 volt. So <coughs> after that we go to the, uh, the logic level converter um, which is currently sitting on the breadboard, uh, hence prototype and that converts the 3.3 volt logical level um, from the Wi-Fi to the 5 volt level and vice versa from the 3 pi. So we have <coughs> uh, the four wires going into the 3 pi um, and that's RX, TX, ground and VCC which on the 3 pi is 5 volts. So basically right now it's just stopped <coughs> um, in the way that I'm getting around the paying $99 for the Apple developer registration um, and actually being able to load my uh, my app on my iPod or on my iPod, uh, iPod Touch. Um, right now I'm just running iSimulate <coughs> which is a $16 program that you can buy um, through the App Store. It's kind of blurry right here but basically what's happening is that my iPod Touch is also connected to the same ad hoc network that um, my MacBook is, which is being created by the Wi-Fi, and <clears throat> um, so basically, iSimulate can send um, your GPS and accelerometer data uh, data over that Wi-Fi network and um, be used in your iPhone simulator. So let's take a look at what happens. Um, Going to be kind of hard to videotape, but <clears throat> um, so I'm taking my iPod. And when I tilt it forward, the i or the the three pi should start going forward, or the move or the wheels should start moving forward. Um, right now, I just have it on like a, a roll of electrical tape, uh, so it doesn't actually run anywhere uh, because we're still in the beautiful prototyping stage. But uh, here it goes. So you can see as I tilted it, as I tilted the iPod, the three pi is actually moving forward, and then when I um, keep the iPod level or turn it back level, the 3 pi stops. When I go backward, the 3 pi goes backward. When I turn or tilt the iPod to the right, the 3 pi will start slowly turning to the right. You can't really tell, obviously, but each, uh, both of the wheels are now moving in the opposite direction, so since it's turning right, the left motor is turning forward and the right motor is turning backwards and then stop back at the let's call it the equilibrium point um, so now when I turn tilt or sorry tilt the iPod to the left the wheels will again uh, go in opposite directions but in the opposite from turning right <coughs> so that's the basics um, of how my prototype system is working. Uh, hopefully I can pony up the $99 so I can actually get this app running on my iPod Touch. Um, but that's it.